Lima call, calling CQ, hello CQ. CQ calling CQ, hello CQ. Whiskey 6 Lima Golf. Whiskey 6 Lima Golf. Hi, I'm Jim W6LG for Ham Radio Basics. Welcome to my radio room here on Wolf Mountain. Been really busy the last few weeks. We've had um, a lot to do, and I'll explain that in a subsequent video. Um, one of the things that did happen is we've had a lot of uh, rain and snow. You may have seen uh, pictures on the internet of, uh, or, or on the news, of flooding here in California. Uh, we had snow down below 2,000 feet the other day, and here's a picture from, uh, from my front yard, a couple of our vehicles covered with a couple of inches of snow. There's one topic that I've avoided discussing many times, and that is grounding. It is a difficult subject. It is full of words that have more than one meaning, and I'm going to try to explain my view of grounding. And in that regard, it's going to be grounding, earthing, bonding, protecting, and shielding. And in the simplest ways, as I view it, how you should apply those things in, in your station, how I think you should apply it. Your local building code may be different. Your local building inspector may have a different idea. There's a lot of mis, what I view as misinformation. Maybe, maybe those folks are right. Uh, for example, uh, this device, I don't know if that's going to be in focus or not, is, uh, might be familiar with what this looked like before it was modified, had a, um, a, a grounding screw located here, here. So you plug this into the outlet, run that screw uh, into the cover plate screw <clears throat> to provide a ground for the, um, the outlet or the device you're plugging in. There is a gentleman who has a PhD. Uh, he calls himself doctor. Obviously, he knows a lot more than I do. He recommends that you buy a bunch of these, and, or buy some anyway, and cut this lug off, plug it into the wall, and plug your equipment into that. Um, I don't think that's a good idea. Uh, there's a reason why we have grounded outlets in current construction and have for maybe 40 years in most jurisdictions. I think here it's close to 50. There are, in essence, two ground wires to each outlet. One is neutral, which is grounded at the panel, and the other is a separate ground, which goes also to a bus bar at the panel. Um, in our jurisdiction uh, here in Nevada County, uh, if you have a sub-panel, it is not to be grounded. The main panel is to be grounded. Everything ties back to that one grounding lug in the main panel. So in a sub-panel, you separate the, uh, the neutral from the ground. You don't put a bus bar, you don't put a bar across. Why is that? Well, I'll, I'll get to that in just a minute. But getting back to this, um, before you do this, watch this video and decide whether or not that's a good idea. I think it's not such a good idea. Along those lines, I've created a little video with um, some animation in it, and it's um, a video of my neighbor. Uh, we're going to call him Joe Ham. Joe is an active amateur radio operator. He just recently purchased a Yesu transceiver, beautiful transceiver, absolutely gorgeous, does all kinds of neat things. And he's very proud of it. He's had it on his desk now for a couple of months. Um, I say that, but it's been off his desk for a time. And the reason for that was uh, he experienced uh, reports of distorted audio, uh, RF and the audio, all kinds of messy things. So it went back to, uh, to Yesu for service. Uh, they found nothing wrong with it, which upset Joe. Um, and Joe, at that point, had no idea what, what could be wrong. It was really driving him crazy, as you can see. Um, so Joe asked me about grounding, bonding, earthing, shielding, and protecting. Things all relate to each other, and this would be a good point to, 
give you my definition of each of those. And it, by the way, we're able to solve uh, Joe's, uh, Joe's problem with this transceiver for which he was a very happy guy. I've drawn this video, cobbled it together with some pictures from Home Depot and other stuff uh, to show a typical wiring scheme to a residence. The transformer on the pole is called a pole pig or a pole transformer. I happen to have one in the basement. I used it to run a linear amplifier for a lot of years. Three wires come into the main panel. There are two black and one neutral. Usually the neutral is has no insulation on it. In the main panel, the hot sides separate and connect to lugs. The neutral connects to a bus bar. At the bottom of the panel, you can see where I have what I'm calling it as an earthing conductor and doesn't quite show in this video, but an earth rod, which is a driven rod. Um, for purposes of this video, I'm going to have different definitions for uh, grounding, bonding, and earthing. Grounding is going to be where you tie a bunch of things together. Common reference point could be the, the ground in a chassis, could be the perimeter on a circuit board, uh, could be any number of things, but it is not grounding to the earth. It is just grounding, tying them together. The mechanical for putting those connections together is bonding. So if you have a transceiver and an amplifier and you run a wire between those two or a piece of braid between those two, that mechanical connection is called a bond or bonding. For my purposes, I'm going to try to stick to using earthing where there is actually a connection to the earth. So I'm not going to call it a ground rod. I'm going to try to remember to call it an earthing rod. So we've got a pole pig, a GFCI breaker. That breaker is the kind that will trip if a little bit of current, very little, through the ground conductor. So you have three wires connected to the panel. You've got a hot, neutral, and a ground. If some of the current flows through that ground wire, the GFCI faults. If it sees a whole bunch of current being drawn, uh, it will also trip because it, it is a breaker. Typically, they're 15 amps. And this would be the typical wiring scheme that you would use. Connect to the ground wire connects to a common point. Uh, it may go to one outlet and then bridge over to another, uh, as I did with the neutral wire. Or it may connect to one screw, as I did with the um, the hot wire, if you will, the black wire, and then from another screw over to another outlet. So. What happens if there's a fault and the neutral becomes uh, open? What happens if you are in contact with the neutral? You're, you're running a drill. Uh, that's Cal OSHA's uh, uh, diagram. It's so poor I didn't put it up, but a guy's holding a drill. Uh, the drill has a metal case. It's an old picture. Um, they case becomes energized and the guy is electrocuted. Now here's the last point of this video and here goes. I don't think you should connect a ground rod to your or an earth rod to your equipment. I don't think that's a good idea. You may have a better idea and if you do I'm I'm open. So here's a diagram. I've got a driven rod and uh, the ham is run. Why is that a problem? Well, let's say the um, neutral does open up and the guy is across that neutral. Um, there's a fault and he now is conducting current from his body uh, down to ground, down to the earth. Or let's say there's a fault in the guy's transceiver and he touches the cabinet uh, and current flows from the energized cabinet through his body to ground. It is the subject of much debate among electricians and engineers and um, 
willing to discuss it here. If you run a ground rod to your equipment and you bond it all to the earth, are you defeating the purposes of the GFCI breaker or the breaker in the panel if there is a fault? I think you are. Anyway, with respect to my neighbor, he's a happy guy now. We brought his equipment over here. We hooked it up. It worked perfectly. Went back to his place and made some corrections. Uh, he thought he had to tie everything to a pipe behind the equipment and then tie that pipe to, uh, to the earth. Uh, once we dis disconnected all that, went to a common connection for all the grounding, RF, AC, and DC. Everything worked fine. And that's another thing too, is we are dealing with AC, DC, and RF. Few people have to deal with all three of those. And that's what makes our situation a little bit more difficult than some others. All right. Stay tuned. Next video is coming. Thanks for watching. If you haven't subscribed, uh, please do so below. If you have a question or a comment, if you're an electrician, an engineer, uh, a PhD, <laughs> uh, post that below. I'd love to hear from you. Um, like I said, it's a, the subject of debate amongst engineers, and some have ver some are very adamant about how things are to be done, and they like to have the equipment grounded. Anyway. 7-3 for now. I'm Jim Dilley, 6LG for Ham Radio Basics. Thanks for watching. See you in the next one. Bye-bye.